The holes that we provide beneath each of the panels need to be designed to allow our present and future control cables to be installed. For a new substation, we normally provide a square hole under each of the panel locations, just smaller than the panel dimensions itself, which provides us maximum flexibility to install cables of any size and from any angle. If we're doing a future extension on the substation and we need to provide additional holes, we can use a standard concrete cutting machine to provide two or three holes in the location where the panel is required. In the basement below the control room, we then provide metal cable trays, which will then carry all of the control cables and take them where they need to go inside the substation building. These come in various shapes and sizes, including straight elements, corner elements, and junction elements. When we're designing the cable tray system, we need to ensure that we don't put the cable tray too close to the bottom of the panel, as we need to consider the bending radius for all of the cables involved. This is defined by the manufacturer, and the minimum distance that we need from the cable tray to the bottom of the glam plate will be defined by the cable that has the largest bending radius. For most high voltage substations, we have multiple cable tray layers, all hanging off the same cable tray support. And we split the cables between the cable trays by function, so we may have separate cable trays for control cables, power cables, and SCADA cables. The SCADA cables tend to have the lowest bending radius, so it's normal practice to put these on the top layer. We then connect each of the cables onto their associated cable tray. 